Okay, what we've got here is a rodo that's been shot on the side of the wood. Now it's managed to get up and get into the wood. Um, that was out on the tram line. It's ran in. It looked like a heart and lung shot. We can see here some scrapes in the soil where it tried to get up. Well, actually managed to get up. And we can see some pins here, uh, which are on row particularly fall out very readily. We keep looking, looking for signs of strike, and if we keep looking here, we can see some blood. And it's red, bright red blood, which uh, indicates possible heart. So then the next job was to get Meg, German uh, wirehead pointer out. And she's only a youngster, but uh, she made a good job of this on this uh, particular bit of film. There's no doubt. She's just checking back where she think us being. She's having a little fiddle around, I think, to be quite honest, because she is a youngster, but a little bit of encouragement. And uh, she'll get her nose down. Now something's taking her interest. She's just trying to work it out. She's going to work back a little bit. It's called Hunt and Heal Lion, which is uh, what uh, is a hunting term. And uh, yeah, just checking things out again. She's gone on a bit, and uh, now she yes, she's going to wrap me in a in a knot with the lead. Yes, yeah, she has. But now she's got her nose down, and she's keener, and she'll start to work into the work into the wood where she saw it's gone. And now she has got her nose down solid. She's working through, and uh, she'll come to a bit here where she checked. In fact, this bit here, this bit here. And uh, what she's uh, done is she's found some paint and pins from the animal, um, which is uh, the fur and the spot to her blood. And we'll go back to that in a little while with the camera. You can see what she was looking for at and what she found. She's now pushing on again. Now she's getting keener still. And pulling the head. And then uh, this last bit, the nose is really down. And she finds what she's looking for in this little bush. She's only young, so there's nothing wrong with letting her have a good um, uh, sort of sniff, and she's having a look at what she's found, and uh, that's her reward. I'm very pleased with herself. Now this is where she checked, and that's the pins, and on this elder, what we'll see in a moment, you can see uh, what we call paint, which is the blood. So you get uh, pins and paint. And this is where the animal pushed through. And uh, like I said, just letting her have a little look uh, and see what she's done. Nice little track, about 100 metres. Anyway, we're bringing the beast back to the larder now. We haven't got to clean it out and do a field growl at where we were because we're very close to the larder. So it makes sense to bring it back and have the tools and the winch and uh, also the, the cleanliness that you don't just haven't got uh, 
out in the field. Now inside the back of the truck we've got a um, carcass tray and the carcass tray is uh, to help keep the animal clean um, anywhere has been shot where there could be infection or anything like that uh, uh, get in through um, through the bullet hole um, it also keeps the back of the truck clean it will just be taken out uh, power washed out and allowed to dry and you've got something perfectly sterile to put the carcass in just cutting the hawks now and we're just putting the stainless steel gambrel in uh, easily washed and I'm lowering the winch there's no need to make life any more difficult than it has to be. The winch isn't just because of the weight, but mainly because you can lift it up and down and just get it a comfortable height for working on. Different with a red, obviously. Now we've got the animal hanging up. Next thing to do is take the head and hocks off. Before we do that, we're going to check the uh, cleaves, make sure that they're clean, that there's no pus or sores or anything to indicate that there could be uh, foot and mouth. Checking between the cleaves and on top. The tongue is also important. If it's blistered, or um, lesions on the tongue then that can also be a sign that it's uh, suffering with foot and mouth it isn't to say that every time you get something on the tongue that's what it is but uh, there could be that's the atlas joint now it's very very handy to know where that is a very good idea to practice practice every time you get a deer until you can find it over and over again it's also the joint where you can take the head off the neck at the highest point and you don't lose any meat like that and you can do it without a saw you just whittle your way around and uh, the head will come off and once this head has been took off we're gonna just inspect the uh, submaxillary glands and the retropharyngeal uh, glands underneath the, the uh, it, under the bottom jaw this is the uh, hawks. Robert just taking the hawks off. And you can see he's got uh, rubber gloves and an apron on. This is all to keep things clean. Uh, this animal has already entered the food chain the moment the trigger was pulled. And uh, also, until you get this animal opened up, uh, you don't know if there's anything particularly wrong with it. So you need to protect the uh, operator as well make sure that they stay clean and safe just twisting off the hocks there and there we go this is the uh, just cutting back the underneath you can see uh, from here from this area you can see the uh, submaxillary and retropharyngeal and this also was shot in January so uh, we can see that there's uh, that the doe was expecting twins now it's hard um, and it might not seem fair but the only way to keep numbers down is to cull does and the only time to do that is when they haven't got dependent youngsters and what we're now looking at is the red awful lungs, heart, and liver lymph nodes right through? We can check the uh, heart, we can check that the uh, bag round the heart, the pericardium, is a loose fit and that it's a wet fit, and that's a uh, sign of good health. 
um, we can check um, bronchial lymph nodes and these are all in the manual uh, that we produce um, and good photographs of them Robert's just pointing out the bronchial lymph node there and uh, you can have a look at the lungs make sure there's no hard lumps in them um, which can be a sign of uh, TB we can incise the liver and uh, by incising it and then squeezing it we can see if there's liver fluke uh, which will be like a flat uh, fish like thing um, and if there is liver fluke there's no need to worry about that you just have to condemn the liver that liver is clean but the point is that uh, the carcass would be clean but you wouldn't let the liver uh, go into the human food chain in fact you wouldn't let it go into the in your dog's food chain as a kidney plenty of fat around it it's a good good sign now Robert's next job was to clean out the uh, back passage of the animal you can see just below the gambrel are uh, the uh, metatarsal gland uh, this is a sign on a seeker because that will be a bright white um, on a munt jack you can't see it at all um, it's just rinsing out the carcass there's pros and cons uh, to that some people say you should never do it a lot of people do it out of course we do it when we feel we need to You can see right through there though, and that means that that uh, back passage is completely clean, all the tube and gone, uh, and bladder, and the next thing to do is lard the animal, and then clear up. We run our chiller between 2 and 7, uh, that gives us uh, an average of below 7. Thanks for watching.